To buy these 10 LEGO sets, it would cost $670. The question is, are 5,757 plastic bits worth a car payment? Absolutely not. $700 for plat? What stunted? This is every Avatar set LEGO has made. And in this video, I'm going to attempt to justify owning it all. The sets are released in two waves, the first one covering the James Cameron Avatar movie from 2009, and the second going over the way of water. Let, let's get some stats on the board. For $700, you'll end up with 28 minifigures, 27 of which are technically unique. Or for less, you could get a table that stands up on its own. Or, for 700 big ones, you could technically own eight sci-fi animals. Or, for much less, you could... You could get the... I, I'm trying to... I, I got a, a table sponsor and I legally am required to talk about it. Unlike this table, I have a few problems with the Avatar theme. Starting with the minifigures, having extra long arms and legs, a tail and a tall head, they dwarf normal figures. Most of the figures look great, like the mean military guy, or Jake, or or the, the hot one, or the uh, the other... the hot one, and, and the, hot, the hot one, and the... Uh, but unfortunately, even though these minifigures aren't representing the same characters, many of them share the exact same prints on the legs, which, pff, bummer. And that isn't my only issue. Figures like Norm and the mean military guy should have had printing on the waist part of the tail to better match with the clothes, and that's been done before. But all of the Navi have a new hair mold so they can mate with the world around them, just like in the movies, which you watched with your parents and, and siblings at the theaters on an IMAX four times. They can mate with each other, they can do a horse, they can tap a tree. And while we may, regrettably, not be able to tap into the world around us with our hair, at least you can plug into the Flexi Desk to, to charge your phone. Now that's still pretty good. Excellent product placement aside, the figures are only part of the set, and hopefully the rest of it can make me feel better about my decisions. Uh, uh, with money. The builds fall into three categories, the Navi and creatures, landscape, and human stuff. Starting off first, ten different animals were built in Lego, and outside of the three generic inclusions, all look the part. But the scaling is a, a little wacky. All of them are far too large, with the exceptions of the whale, who is quite small. The seal dolphin and the deep sea whore round out the way of water trio. All of them, including the Ryu stingray, use a brick-built coral reef as a pedestal to hold them up, and while it makes displaying them a breeze, I have some issues that I'll touch on those later. On the land side of things, I'm a little less impressed. The dinosaurs being one molded piece looks freaking fantastic, and more accurate than any other thing in this theme. But compared to its more mundane counterpart, the absence of leg and neck articulation is felt. As for the BDSM panther, <laughs> I only have one minor gripe to point out, and that is the tiny amount of color bleeding through the interior of the limbs. Swapping around some common parts easily fixes that, but that would uh, make the total of the price go up a little. Hmm. From the bottom up, the space pterodactyl looks kind of robotic. Just don't look at the bottom. The big one has next to no movement with its legs, making it look a little stiff when flying, but looks great when on the ground or about to land. The smaller banshees have the exact opposite problem, where they look great flying, but look like crap when off their pre-built perch. The last few avatar animals are a bit of a mixed bag. They're only meant to be an embellishment to make the sets feel more alive, and it works! It just makes the first wave of sets feel like there's not as much going on. Adding something simple like a few frogs and obnoxious neon colors would have gone a long way. And raising our price total again. While on the topic of obnoxiousness, the second category, terrain is a double-edged sword. On the one hand, having a coherent and better yet interconnecting lineup makes for an increasingly gratifying system that builds off of each purchase. Most LEGO themes do this, but Avatar, specifically the first wave of sets, does this expertly with nature builds that can be mixed and matched to fill out your own little world of Pandora. The sexy blue people planet. It's not entirely perfect. Rather, none of it is remotely <laughs> perfect. For being brick built, the Tree of Souls on paper is executed very well, but in real life, the droopiness looks like an alien with ED. The different plants look like what you would imagine space jungle plants to look like until you see the provided reference material in the instruction booklet. The Way of Water sets do a much better job replicating the coral reefs, such as how the coloring is consistent across all five sets. It was better than the first wave in a few different ways, but unfortunately didn't have the same things that the first excelled in. Connecting and building the world of Avatar. Pick away the builds that these prop up, and you're left with a pile of brightly colored garbage. I want you to try and remember the movies. The visually stunning scenes depicting things that are only possible in fiction. The Hallelujah Mountains unbelievably massive rocks suspended in air being the most spectacular of them all. And this is not it. it. Definitely does not pass the this is that test at all. If you add an extra few, it might help. Really, the only reason this is not a total waste is 
because the flexi desk couldn't possibly support rocks that size, but 270 pounds of Legos version? That is not a problem, unlike the consistent pricing issue that keeps rearing its ugly head. Not the flexi desk though, that is rather affordable. By spending a little bit more money on the military sets, changing and fixing things, it should further justify the price, according to math. With the next set, that, that could be a little bit of a challenge. Brickheads have a very specific design that rarely mesh well with most other themes. So unless you have a mental disability that requires you to spend money needlessly, then it's a solid option to pass up, F tier. The wheelchair could be used as a foundation for a small scale bulldozer like the ones we see in the first movie. Adding some cameras, the thing can now be piloted remotely back at base. Turn the grayscale slider all the way up. That mostly useless brickhead is now an ancient stone monument. Do the Navi ever show the ability to carve stone or use metal tools whatsoever. So if I would have spent more than two seconds doing a quick Google search, I could have found that in some of the written material that expands upon the lore of Avatar, they have the three laws of Awa, essentially their god, that tells them in the very first one, you shall not set stone upon stone. This was a waste of time. I'm gonna pretend that a group of heretics built it a little while back and that these rules weren't made up 10 years after the fact, contradicting pre-established information. The amp suit definitely passes the looks test. You'd never be able to tell that by the pictures and the instructions. However, not carrying the machine gun is the third biggest letdown of the theme. Regardless, the chainsaw, knife, and fat little fingers all look wrong. Not that my attempt is much better, but at least the fingers aren't as chubby. The Samson or Avatar helicopter is quite sleek. Sleek enough to have more than one? Probably not. I think it could have been a brick or two taller to better accommodate the pilot and extra tall avatar figures without sacrificing the looks. The war paint was unique to one pilot, so if you want a generic aircraft, you have to swap around some blue for gray parts, and unfortunately there's no non-destructive way to get rid of the blue stripe on the windshield. I also stretched out the missile pods at just a tad and put a slightly more appropriate orange tie on there. The last two vehicles come from the second movie. The crab suit is the only thing I wouldn't want to change in any way, but the Mako sub? Oh boy. I just can't get over the enormous gaps left by the poor window placement. The amp and crab suit both also have gaps, but because it's so minimal, it doesn't take away from the look. And trying to fix it would be such a major change that it won't even be the same model at the end. And not because I don't have the talent to do it. I, I, I am talented. I could, I could. The only thing left I haven't talked about is the Navi bungalow. Right out of the gate, it impresses me by being $20 more than the Mako with 20 less pieces. The set is surprisingly recognizable, but it makes me ask, who is this for? And not just the water tree house. Space dinosaurs, sea monsters, robots, and helicopters make sense. Kids love all of that, but the targeted age demographic wasn't even alive when the first movie came out. Not that it matters anyways, the sets are recommended between eight and 12 year olds, but the movie's PG-13. And what 13 year old is still playing with toys? Most of them stop at that age, so the ludicrous prices make more sense because what kid could afford $45 for the cheapest set of the wave? But what adult is gonna get that when there's a far more attractive design on the store shelf right next to it? It's like you go to buy a desk and they don't even give you the option of what color the frame is or the material of the desktop, like this one, which is bamboo and black. The only way I can see salvaging the steaming pile is to make a really awesome display, but to do that would require a ton of outside resources like extra parts or crafting material and buying duplicate sets, which saying that out loud just seems just plain stupid. Yep. Another kit of Banshees and two more Samsons could help out quite a bit. The Navi gets some substantial growth. The leftover duplicate Sully torsos make for decent pilots, and the extra mobile bases can make a slightly more accurate version. The human heads have masks that would make some generic camo guys into proper RDA soldiers. The second film had a number of cool new tech that LEGO didn't represent, like a small scale suit. Best part is, I don't have to do just one display. With the preset level I save for my max height, the skies are open. And with the other button being preset to the lowest settings, we can plunge the battles into the seas. With just a tiny increase from roughly $700 to $1,000, you can now, I'm sure, fully justify the price point of the Lego Avatar theme. Or you could use the link in the description down below and get a really nice table that I was genuinely going to get before FlexiSpa ever reached out and offered one to me. And it would be near infinitely more useful than any of that going on over there. Side note, uh, go me for not mentioning the other Avatar at all in this entire video. Oh, shit.